So it turns out when your vertex is at the origin, the equation for your parabola is super easy. That means your, uh, if you think about shifts, basically you have no shift left, right, up, or down if your vertex is at the origin. So your equation will look the easiest. So this is very similar to the last problem. What's the difference with the starting information? Vertex is the same. What's different about the focus? So the A is on the Y. So our focus will be on the Y axis instead of along the X axis. So go ahead and graph it out and then find the equation. I'm going to leave up the previous problem on the board in case it's not in your notes. It's going to be very similar to the previous problem, except this is going to be a parabola opening up or down, not sideways. So this will be more like a parabola you're used to. And it's a good time for any questions that you have. Start out with the graph. That's probably the easiest thing to start with. So I kept my parabola. The actual points on the parabola are all in purple here. And then I used a black marker for the focus, directrix, parts of the graph that aren't actually on the, that are kind of guidance, not actually points on the parabola. All right, so any questions on the graph before we jump into how to write the equation down? Now, if you remember back to pre-calculus one class, Basically, this is going to look something like y equals ax squared. It's so very similar to that. We're going to figure out exactly what it is. It's a happy parabola. It's opening up. It's a normal parabola we're used to. 
So let's write down the uh, distance equation. Distance from the directrix to the point is equal to the distance from the focus to a point. So I'll use, I was using orange before for a random point on the graph. So it'll be x, y, that's gonna be p. Our focus is zero A. And this is our directrix line is down here at the bottom. It's the line Y equals A. All right, we, we need to measure our directrix distance right there and our focus distance right there. And they're supposed to be the same. So usually the directrix is way easier to measure. The distance, what is the distance from our point P to the directrix? So this is the vertical distance. So do I use the X or Y coordinate out of the point? So I need to use the Y. So our distance is gonna be Y plus A. So whatever Y is plus the A down below. Now this other distance, we have to use the square root, the distance equation, or distance formula. So it's gonna be the, subtract the x's, so we got x minus zero squared plus y minus a squared. So it's x squared plus y minus a squared. And same thing we did before, we're gonna square both sides and that'll eliminate our square root. So we're gonna square both sides of this equation. So that gives us y plus a squared equals x squared plus y minus a squared. Now foil everything out and simplify it down. So we got y squared plus two a y plus a squared equals x squared plus y squared minus 2ay plus a squared. Our a squareds cancel out. Our y squareds cancel out. And we got x squared on the right, and I'm going to add 2ay to give us 4ay equals x squared. So if you <coughs> notice on this equation, it simplifies down really nicely. Our last equation simplified down really nicely as well. The only difference between these two equations, x and y, basically trade of places. And if we go back a little further, we had a slightly uglier equation when our uh, vertex was not at the origin. Our equation was a little uglier. So what we're gonna do is just look at what happens when your, folk, when your vertex is at the origin and make a big table up for this. This is gonna have eight rows total in the table. So I'm gonna make some lined paper. So it's gonna have eight rows total. And we'll start with the vertex. Focus, directrix, equation, axis of symmetry, and the direction it's going to be opening in. So all of our vertexes on this table are gonna be zero, zero. So the two foci we looked at, one was A zero, the other was zero A. And we're assuming our A is gonna be, actually we're not gonna assume it's positive anymore. Okay, positive or negative. 
All right, our directrix, <coughs> this first one, the first line in our table was the second to last example we graphed. So we had a focus of A0, so our directrix was x equals negative A. So I'm just going to copy this. This example is the first row in the table. So our directrix is x equals negative A. The equation we got was y squared equals 4xA. Actually, I'm going to write it as 4ax. Axis of symmetry, we didn't draw that on the graph, but we'll go back and draw it now. What's the axis of symmetry on this graph? So it'll be the x-axis, things will look the same. So I'll draw that in. So let's keep that into the orange axis of symmetry. So y equals 0 is the axis of symmetry. And it opened to the right. And <coughs> it opens to the right when A is greater than 0. If A is less than 0, you're going to get basically the exact same picture, except you're going to get the mirror image. So the focus will be on the left, the directrix will be on the right, and it would open to the left total. So it's opening to the left if A is less than 0. So our second row of this table, this is going to be the second example that we looked at. This one right here. So we're just going to fill in all the information. Directrix is now y equals negative a. The equation was, I'm going to write it as x squared equals 4ay. Axis of symmetry. What is the axis of symmetry on this parabola? So we have vertical line x equals 0. And it's going to open up if a is greater than 0 and down if a is less than 0. So we're actually going to only have four rows total in this table. So leave some space. We're going to come back and fill in two more rows. So this next example we're going to analyze and graph. So this example, is it going to be row 1 or row 2? How do we know row 2? So basically, we're looking right there. And it's going to be, if the x is squared, it's going to be row 2. If the y is squared, it's going to be row 1. So I'm going to rewrite that form x squared equals 4ay. So right here, negative 12 is 4a. So we got negative 12 equals 4a. So what I want you to do is tell me all the information. So we're in row 2. I want to know vertex, focus, directrix, and a graph. So find all of those. You can use the table. You can also go clueless method. That works too. But we have a table, so we don't need to go clueless method right now.
any questions on graphing this out or finding these pieces? So how can you be sure that I'm not just making things up, that this is actually a graph? Checks and points. So I wasn't too careful about coordinates. Let's be a little bit more careful. Vertex is pretty obvious, 0, 0. Um, and you should be able to tell really quickly when x is 0, y is 0 in our original equation. That's not hard to see. Uh, let's label the other two points that are relatively easy to find. What are the coordinates of this point on the lower right side? What's the y coordinate? It's lined up with the focus. Negative three. Negative three. So take about 10 seconds and figure out the x coordinate. If you measure carefully, you should be able to get the x-coordinate. Remember, it comes from the fact that this orange distance is the same as that orange distance. So it's equidistant from directrix to the focus. So you, to measure up to the directrix, you do three to get, hit the x-axis, and then three more to hit the directrix. So that means six is how far you're going, so I have to go six to the right. So we get six, negative three. And over on the left side is going to be the mirror image, which is negative six, negative three. All right, now I want to see, are these actually on the graph? So we're going to plug in, and hopefully check by plugging into the original equation. So x is negative 3, so we got x squared equals negative 12 times 6. Uh-oh, this doesn't look right. Oh, I plugged in the x and the y backwards. Uh, that's not going to work out. Or y is negative 3, x is 6. So 36 is hopefully 12 times 3. All right, so we got the point satisfies the equation, so it's on the graph. All right, so that's how we're going to go the other direction. We start with a equation, go back to a graph. So now what we're going to do is start with some slightly different information. Find equation and graph. With focus zero four. Focus 0, 4, and directrix y equals negative 4. So didn't tell you about the vertex, but you can figure out the vertex very easily from the focus and the directrix. So graph those two out, graph the rest of the parabola, and write the equation down. And that table will be useful here as well.
Which row of the table are we using here? Is our directrix horizontal or vertical? Horizontal. Y equals negative 4. So just looking at the directrix, y equals negative 4. It's a y equals, not an x equals. So we're on row 2. Our a is not negative 4. a is regular 4 in this case. a equals 4 and row 2. x squared equals 4ay. So you're just plugging in 4 for a. So x squared equals 16y. Now, if you were back in pre-calculus one class, you would write, you would have solved for y, and you would have written this as y equals 1 16th x squared. So you could think of it as a 1 16th compression vertically off a regular parabola. So it's a regular parabola compressed a lot vertically. Or you could rewrite it as x over 4 squared equals y. And this represents a horizontal stretch of four times as wide. So those are the two different ways you can think about the stretching transformations happening. But I think for our purposes in this section, this is the best way to write it because it fits in with the form that we have on the table. So now we're going to do some questions that are a little bit more tricky. So all the ones before, they fit pretty much the information I gave you is exactly what you could read right off the table. So there was not, this concept w was new, but using the table, it was very easy to go back and use the table. So the starting information is going to be a little different now for our next example. So I want to uh, find the equation and graph the parabola. with vertex 0, 0, x-axis symmetry, and graph contains the point minus 1 half 2. I want to know the focus directrix and, of course, the graph in the equation. So when in doubt, just start by graphing everything. Vertex 0, 0, it's easy. Now, I'm counting in, in 1 half. So I'm going to have every square on my graph paper count as 1 half. So I'm going to go left 1 half, and then up 2. So I have this point. I also have x-axis symmetry. What other point do I get on the graph if I have x-axis symmetry. So two choices. Do I get the point down here or the point up there? So yeah, I want x-axis symmetry, so I'm going to get the point at the bottom, flipped over to the x-axis. So I'll just draw everything in purple here. So this is enough to graph out the parabola. Not enough to write down the vertex, uh, the focus and the directrix, but at least we'll get the graph of the parabola going. Oh, it's a nice parabola. All right. So will my directrix be vertical or horizontal? Vertical. So it'll be, be vertical. So it's going to be an x equals, I don't know what a is, but I'll figure it out. It's going to be some number a right there. Focus. Describe where the focus has to be. 
We don't know exactly where it is, but what along what axis should it be? Positive or negative x-axis? Negative. So if I write focus, it will look like, if I take my directrix to be positive, this one will be negative a, zero. So we're not using the clueless method now. We're using the facts that we know about parabolas. So I know my directrix appears on the right of the parabola, and my focus is going to appear kind of in the opening part. Or you can think of it in the mouth of the parabola. All right, now we know this much. How in the world can we figure out A? So let's think about what row of the table are we, are we on. We have x-axis symmetry. So that means we're on row 1 right here. So x-axis symmetry means y equals 0 is our axis of symmetry. Or I should say y equals 0 is the horizontal line. All right. So my equation is going to look like y squared equals 4ax. So I'm using the equation right here. y squared equals 4ax. So of course, if I plug in uh, my vertex 0, 0, that will satisfy the equation. x is 0, y is 0. That works. What I'm going to do now is take the point that's on the graph. It needs to satisfy this equation. And that will let me solve for a. So I'm going to plug the point in and then solve for a. So go ahead and do that now. Plug that point in. Make sure x goes in for x, y goes in for y. And then figure out what a needs to be. So we got a is negative 2, and that means our equation is y squared equals negative 8x. We got the graph already. I want to fill in the, uh, write down the focus directrix and then draw them on the graph. So I know a is negative 2. My focus, let's see, focus is a0. So that's negative 2, 0. Directrix is x equals negative a. So that's x equals negative negative 2, or x equals positive 2. Now we can fill those in on the graph. x equals 2 is our directrix. Our focus is negative 2, 0. So next up, we're going to look at shifting. And I'm going to go back to the table and fill in two more rows. So 
So the difference on these two rows is we're going to shift to the right H and down K. So to the right H and down K. And we need to figure out what this does to everything else. So if I go shift to the right H and down K, so our new focus is going to be A plus H. So I'm going to take our X coordinate and move it to the right H. I'm going to take the Y coordinate and move it down K. So it's 0 minus K, which gives us minus K. Uh-oh. Yeah, minus K. What am I doing? I'm going to shift up K, not down K. Wow. All right, directrix, we're shifting to the right, H. So what is our new directrix? We're copying off the top line. Let me blank out that second row right here so we don't look. I'll redact it. So we're just going for the top, line, the top row, and we're just translating. We're moving to the right, H, and up, K. So what would my new directrix equation be? All right, you're using too many brain cells. So original was minus A, and all I'm going to do is move it right H. So it's minus A plus H. Basically, wherever you see original X coordinate, it's going to be a plus H. Now our equation is going to be a little bit trickier. And now I need to write this smaller so I can fit everything in. Our equation is going to be a little bit more complicated. So wherever I see a y, I'm going to replace it by y minus k. And that needs to be squared. Equals for a, I'm going to replace x by x minus h. So this might seem like we're moving the wrong, it looks like we're moving down k, because you see a y minus k, and it looks like we're moving left h. But that's actually not the case. I want to take your attention back to something we did relatively recently. So don't write this down. What is this the equation of? Circle. This is the circle, not centered at the origin. The circle is shifted to the right H, and this is shifted up K. So it looks like the opposite of what it actually is. So something really similar is happening here. You're shifting, in this case, up K and to the right H. So it's really similar to the way the circle works. And we're going to keep going across the row. Axis of symmetry. So it used to be y equals 0. That was a horizontal line, y equals 0. Now I want to shift it up k. So that's y equals k. And then this is either going to open right or left, depending on if a is positive or negative. So it's going to open right if a is greater than 0, left if a is less than 0. So this last row, we're going to modify the second row by moving the vertex. So I'm going to cross out the first row so I don't look there. And I might as well cross out the row we just wrote so I don't get confused and look back there. So we're doing the exact same thing we just did. And we're just shifting. So our focus was 0a. I want to move it to the right h. So it's going to be h, comma, 
a plus k. Our directrix is now not y equals negative a, but it's y equals negative a plus k. The equation. So x is going to be replaced by x minus h squared equals 4a, and then y is y minus k. Axis of symmetry used to be the horizontal line x equals 0. Now it's going to be x equals h. And it's going to open up or down, same as before. So I think for your final exam, I will put this table on your cheat sheet so you don't have to memorize it. It's quite a bit to keep track of. So do not need to memorize. You do need to be able to use it. So you need to have some familiarity with it, but you don't need to memorize the whole thing. All right, the rest of the examples are going to be in row three or four. So when in doubt, start with the graph. So go ahead and graph the vertex and the focus. So without even worrying about that chart, just knowing the vertex and the focus, where is the directrix going to have to be? Is the vertex going to be a horizontal or a vertical line? So the directrix has to be a vertical line. What's the equation of this vertical line? It'll be negative 4. So it's supposed to put the, it's the vertical line that puts the vertex between the focus and the line. So we got negative 4 is our directrix. And so we can go ahead and graph some points. So graph the two other points that are easy to graph on your parabola. And remember, when measuring, the focus is 4 away from the vertex. So you want to go 4 in the up direction and 4 in the down direction. So any questions on the graph before we start breaking down the different pieces? All right, focus on the vertex. That's probably not a good word to use. Concentrate on the vertex. And normally that's at the origin. So the vertex tells you your shift. So we're shifting left 2 and up 3. So that's h and k right there. So h 
is negative two. That's our left two. You can even draw a little arrow, left two. K is three, and that's up three. So we know H and K. And now we just have to decide, is this row three or four? Let's think about what we have. This opens to the right. It already is pretty obvious from the graph. So it opens to the right. So we're right here, we're in row three. So go ahead and figure out all the rest of the information. So you should know where the fo focus is. I think I drew it on the graph. You know H, so you should figure out A right from that. You also know the directrix, so you can figure out A from the directrix also. So figure out the focus directrix, and then tell me, uh, you know H and K, so tell me what A is. So I want you to find A. And I do that right now, and once you find A, then you're ready to write the full equation of the parabola. So I'll give you two minutes to do this, and I'll leave the chart up on the board. So you know H and K, all you need is A now. So I'm writing down from that chart, the focus is H plus A comma K. We already knew the focus was zero, three. 
but because we know h and k, this is negative 2 plus a comma 3 equals 0, 3. So just pairing these up, 3 obviously equals 3. That's not a problem. And negative 2 plus negative 2 plus a equals 0. So a equals positive 2. So you should have gotten a is positive 2. I could do the same exact thing for the directrix. So from the graph, we already saw x was negative 4. That was a directrix. From the chart, directrix is x equals h minus a. And we said h is negative 2 minus a. So these are supposed to be the same thing. So that means negative 4 is negative 2 minus a. Add 2, we get negative 2 equals a. Uh-oh. Negative 2 equals negative a. So a equals 2. So you can find off the vertex or the, uh, the focus or the directrix. Once you have this, uh, you can write the equation down. y minus k squared equals 4ax minus h. So y minus 3 squared equals 4 times 2 times x plus 2. I would say don't worry about simplifying it anymore. Don't need to FOIL out x minus 3 because <coughs> this, in my opinion, is the best way to write a parabola because it's the closest to what's up in the chart. So don't spend time expanding this out. Just leave it like this.